Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Here with some thoughts on the James Kirkland, Carlos Molina debacle. Now, uh, before the weekend took place, I made three predictions of possible upsets that would happen this weekend. This fight was one of them. I picked Carlos Molina in this fight. Zab Judah over Vernon Paris was another. Judah delivered. We'll deal with that in another video. And I had Eric Morales over Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia did look much better than I thought he would. Garcia legitimately won that fight. This video is about the Carlos Molina James Kirkland fight. Let's talk about it. Now, for those who don't know, Carlos Molina was pitching a masterpiece. Harry Letterman of HBO had him up by seven rounds with two to go. We're in the closing seconds of the 10th round and James Kirkland does what James Kirkland does. Uh, I disagree with Emmanuel Stewart here. I believe it was legit, but James Kirkland gets a great punch in on Carlos Molina is able to drop Carlos Molina at the end of the 10th round, right? Molina gets up right away, talks with the referee. Referee asks him if he's okay. Molina says, yeah, I'm okay, basically, right? Then the referee tells the fighters to go to their corners. The bell for the round has already rung. One of Molina's corner men jumps in the ring, isn't able to touch Carlos Molina, doesn't help Carlos Molina in any way. Molina gets absolutely no advantage from this corner man just stepping in the ring momentarily and then getting back out the ring. Now apparently, according to the referee, the count was still ongoing, right? The ref then finishes the count goes to the side of the ring, you see some people, and this is something that needs to be investigated a little bit, you see some people talking, yelling at the referee at the side of the ring, and then in a scene out of the Ali Liston rematch, the referee then announces that Carlos Molina has been disqualified because a cornerman entered the ring during the count. As people may recall, in the Ali Liston rematch, former champion Jersey Joe Walcott actually allowed Liston to get off the canvas to continue the fight, then someone from the crowd, I believe it was the editor of Ring Magazine, Nat Fleischer, yells at him that Liston was down longer than 10 seconds, and that's when they stopped the fight after the guys had literally continued fighting. Here, the ref goes to the side, someone yells at him, then the referee disqualifies Carlos Molina. I think Molina wins his appeal for the simple reason that when you're down on the canvas and you get up, the referee is supposed to instruct the fighters to go to a neutral corner, not their corner, Right? I mean, you know, you're not supposed to be around your corner. Here, the referee, after talking to Carlos Molina, it's obvious that Molina is completely lucid, is ready to continue. Lord knows he's winning the fight by a wide margin, right? Two of the three judges had Molina winning that fight by three rounds or more, even if the 10th round is a 10-8, Molina would still be ahead on the scorecards headed into the 11th round, right? And so the fact that the referee sends Molina back to his corner after talking with him, after the bell sounds to end the round, right? I would argue that when the referee tells you to go back to your corner, the count is over. The round has concluded. Right? Anybody in your corner can hop in the ring. It was unclear at the time what the ref was doing. HBO's own broadcasting team did 
didn't know what was going on at the time, right? In the moment, there's always uncertainty. But what's not uncertain is that it was the referee that sent Molina back to his corner, right? That mistake, I believe, made it reasonable for guys in the corner to conclude since the ref had already spoken to Molina and did not stop the fight. The ref did not reach the conclusion that Molina could not continue and it was clear Molina was lucid. I believe it was reasonable for the corner to conclude based on the ref's error in sending Molina back to his own corner that that round was over. I wouldn't be surprised if this fight gets declared a no contest. Just keep in mind, though, that this is that special world that we call boxing, where even a deserving winner like Gabriel Campillo lost his appeal at the end of the Tavares cloud fight. So anything can happen. But, as HBO said in reference to the Morales Madonna fight, while Kirkland was awarded the victory in the match, it's clear that Molina won the event. Right, Molina fought Chavez Jr. twice. I would argue he won both fights, certainly the first one. Right, uh, He fought Kermit Cintron, beat him. He fought Erislandi Lara. That fight officially was a draw. There are many who believe Molina won that fight. He clearly was beating James Kirkland. Don't be surprised if Molina gets treated at 154 like Derek Chisora got treated at heavyweight. And don't be surprised if some champion says... I'm going to fight Carlos Molina because he is viewed as an uncrowned champion, right? Molina, I thought, looked spectacular. Now let's talk about what made him look spectacular. We saw in an earlier fight at heavyweight, Marco Huck against Alexander Povetkin. We saw that Povetkin figured out that Huck is great at throwing punches to his opponent's face. And that his leverage, his power is set up to deliver a power shot at that angle. What Marco Huck was not good at was dealing with an opponent who wasn't upright, but who was bent at the waist, who had his head on Huck's chest. Right? Huck couldn't deliver power shots because Huck likes to operate from far away and likes to come in with that strong right hand. So what Povetkin would do is he would bend at the waist and he would put his head right here and Huck didn't know what to do with it. Right? Huck, in fact, got so frustrated he started hitting Povetkin on the back of the head in a legal move. Right? Well, here, Carlos Molina figured out that James Kirkland, like Marco Huck, is great at throwing shots to the face from distance. So what Carlos Molina, who was supposed to be the non-puncher in this fight, did, and this is why it's a sport's a sport of angles, is he literally bent forward and put his head on tough guy Kirkland's chest. And Kirkland didn't know what to do with that. He didn't have the punch angle to hurt Molina when Molina was in that position. It's even worse than that. Molina figured out that Kirkland, the bully with the big knockout percentage, couldn't fight backing up. And so Molina, the guy with six knockouts, actually started using his feet to back up James Kirkland. He was too close to Kirkland for Kirkland to do anything in the middle of the ring. Kirkland's great when he has you pinned on the ropes, but not in the middle of the ring. Right? He was too close for Kirkland to do anything in the middle of the ring. He could tie up Kirkland's lead right hand at will. And then he was able to manhandle Kirkland over to the side of the ropes. I'm just here to tell you the first two rounds <laughs> were masterful. Right? This is what we talk about when we talk about angles. Molina is operating at angles where tough guy Kirkland couldn't throw power shots, right? Kirkland finally, about midway through the fight, starts to figure out that he needs to throw uppercuts 
but he can't frame the uppercut like someone like Carl Frotch can, right? The uppercut is not an intrinsic part of his repertoire. So he's trying to throw uppercuts on Molina, who has great head movement, and he just can't do it. He doesn't know how to throw an uppercut in the middle of the action, right? And so I thought Kirkland was getting methodically dismantled. I thought this was a masterpiece by Molina. Let me also point out, too, there was talk about Molina doing excessive holding. Now, let's be clear. Molina's not holding on to Kirkland because he's hurt. He's not trying to clear his head. No, no, no. Molina is strategically clinching Kirkland and, in my opinion, should have been allowed to continue to do so. In fact, he has Kirkland so timed and so beaten that on multiple occasions, he's able to get Kirkland's head under his armpit. Multiple occasions. He's turning Kirkland like a top. He's clinching Kirkland, tying up his left hand, his right hand, so he doesn't have to worry about Kirkland's right jab. Right? He's too close to Kirkland for Kirkland to generate leverage on his punches. Then he's tying up Kirkland at will. The word mismatch came to mind as I watch this fight. Now, Kirkland did start to shorten the distance, right? The knockdown is the culmination of Kirkland relentlessly trying to stalk Carlos Molina. No question about it. James Kirkland is James Kirkland, right? He has power. He is going to come after you. He's not there to win a boxing contest. He's trying to take you out. His KO ratio is greater than 80%. Right? Just food for thought. That means four out of five Kirkland fights end by knockout. With him getting the knockout. Right? So he continued to come after Molina. But I thought that Molina exposed Kirkland as a guy who quite frankly can't handle certain things happening in the ring. The guys who know how to deal with distance, who know how to play games with you, particularly those on the inside, a guy like Floyd Mayweather, in my opinion, would completely undress James Kirkland. There'd always be the risk of Kirkland's power. But understand, Kirkland is most effective when he has you up on the ropes, right? If you're the kind of fighter who can keep the action in the middle of the ring and can stay too close to Kirkland for Kirkland to get leverage on his punches and can tie up Kirkland in close because Kirkland doesn't know how to avoid being tied up, then you can dominate against Kirkland as Carlos Molina was doing yesterday. I thought this was a blueprint fight. If you know how to fight, you have a shot on James Kirkland in the first round of the Paul Williams-Sergio Martinez rematch. There is a moment in that first round where Sergio Martinez comes inside and ties up Paul Williams and actually starts to fight the fight on the inside. I believe a Martinez, I believe a Floyd Mayweather can beat James Kirkland. I do have my doubts on what happens if James Kirkland fights Saul Alvarez because Saul Alvarez is a shrewd fighter. I'm just not sure if he has the kind of inside game that we saw from Carlos Molina yesterday. Saul Alvarez strikes me as a switch. He's kind of like Vladimir Klitschko. He has a great left hook. He throws a straight, very hard right hand. Then, as he did against Ryan Rhodes, he can switch to a different style where he is a mid-range hooker, right? He, you know, comes in, he throws hooks with both hands, keeps you at arm's length, right? The question, though, is whether he can get inside like Molina did, put his head on Kirkland's chest early, and then play a game where later in the fight 
he's far enough outside. The one thing I do think we learned yesterday is that Carlos Molina can beat James Kirkland. Of that, I have even less doubt than I did before the fight. Let me know what you think. I'm expecting Molina to win his appeal. And if he doesn't win his appeal, I'm expecting him to get Derek Chisora treatment following the Robert Hellenius fight where the powers that be in boxing realize that Molina is really a championship quality guy who is a worthy championship opponent, right? Uh, Molina, quite frankly, might be one of the very best at 154 pounds. If Molina were to fight Floyd Mayweather, I believe we would see the sport at its best because both of those guys know their way around the ring and they would both be throwing a lot of angles at each other. That would be an angle fest. That'd be a great fight. I think Molina is a major talent. I believe he showed that last night. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and you don't have to agree with me. When I made the pre-fight video, just read the comments to that. A lot of people thought that James Kirkland would get the KO and officially that's what happened. Right, the casino, unfortunately for me, is keeping my money this morning <laughs> on a fight where I thought my guy was dominating the fight. Right, and so if you're a Kirkland supporter and you want to be heard, be heard here. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.